Hey guys, welcome back. Uh, today I'm going to be showing you how you can create a node that will make doing something like this uh, very simple. Just going to let this run for a little bit. And there we go. All right, so let me just take you guys through a little bit about what's going on here. I have this custom node here that I'm going to show you guys how to create and it takes in one struct, subtype duration here. And if we look at what it's made up of, there's a lot of information in here. First we have a starting percent. This is how uh, full or empty you want your bar to start out at between 0 and 100. And you can input the seconds, minutes, hours, days, months, even up to years um, for how long you want it to take for your entire bar to fill up or to empty. There is a a uh, boolean here that you can check or uncheck whether you want the bar to count up or count down. And then you're going to input your progress bar name. So this is the name of the variable of the progress bar in the widget. So if we look over here in my test widget, I have a progress bar and the name of this variable is called testing bar. And this is exactly what you're going to enter into this box here. And then we have this custom suffix here. And this just allows you to customize how you want the endings to be for your um, timer. So you can actually um, get rid of everything here and there will just be the numbers showing or you can you know, type in whatever you want. And this is what's gonna show up after your year. So it'll say two, like if I put one year here, it will say one whatever and then however many months, days, hours, minutes. Okay, so we'll get rid of that, go back to years. And the last thing you'll see down here is signals. And you can have up to five elements here. Um, if you put in six or more, nothing will happen um, after the fifth one. And each one of these is made up of a mini struct that contains an integer value and an enum. So this can be anything, any of the same kind of time denominations that you have up here. You can select one from the drop-down menu here. And what this will do is that if you have a timer, say, for five minutes, and right here I have a cycle length of 30 and then seconds, every 30 seconds this is going to fire off a custom event. Um, so if you want to do something like I was changing a mesh, you can have this cycle through at a certain rate. And you're allowed to have five different ones of these um, types of custom events here. There's also a built-in function that will fire off when the bar is completely full or completely empty and that's in addition to these five that you have here. So if we go into the actual um, actor component that I'm going to show you guys how to create. Uh, this was just me messing around. This is how I changed the meshes and this is the custom event here. I only used one in this case but you do have these other four up here and you also have this final one which is um, when the fill bar is completed. Now the way you get to these is if I delete this here you'll see in the functions you're not going to create a function here or call it like this um, or you can but it'll come up here but these are functions that you can click here and they will be part of this override and you guys can hook up whatever you want to that. I just have a bunch of print strings for testing purposes. And that's all that's really hanging out here in the actor component. And the other thing that you guys will have access to, um, this is basically everything that's inside of that actor component. So you have seven different functions, all of the basic ones that you have with any timer, clear it, pause it, unpause. And then you have a few unique ones. So this one will actually change the speed only. And for the speed that you guys can see here, this is the main function, update bar. If you put in one here, that means that one game second will pass by in one real time second. If you put a number like a thousand, that means that a thousand game seconds will go by in one real second. And again, you have that option to fill or empty and you have an option to hide the progress bar when it's finished. 
and all you input is the actual widget. So the whole widget, if you see here in our viewport, I have a 3D widget component here. And this is exactly, once you take this out, this is the widget component here. You drag it out, and you're going to have to cast this um, to create a reference. That's how I made this floating bar. I'll show you guys up here. You just take the widget you get the user widget object and you cast it to whatever you named your widget. And like I said, once you input the name of the progress bar and you give it the widget, the node will take care of the rest. You also have access to all of the actual um, integer values for the time. And you have access to this thing called clock. And that's just to give you a nice neat um, string to print off. So what I have this doing actually in my widget is updating the text. So it's just, this is the string that I pass through, and it just updates the text that's sitting right here. So it's a nice easy way to get it into a readable format. And this is the struct that I showed you guys. This is part of the, the struct is called a wait time. And that's what you put in here. I called mine duration. and it has all of this stuff in it, and then it has a struct inside of that, which is where you get the clock suffixes from. And these are your signals that you can input up to five. All right. And this last one here, last two actually, modify clock. What this will do is allow you to put in a different time. So when you break this struct here, it's going to come out looking like this. And you can basically change the starting percent all the way down to the years. It will not do anything with the progress bar names. You don't have to change the suffixes or your signals, all of this stuff. Even if you put something in here um, in a modify clock function, it won't, it'll just ignore it. So it's only going to look at this stuff here. And of course, you can change the speed. So you can make it go faster or slower when you modify the time. And it also has a nice function to save your clock. And this outputs a struct that can be directly fed back into the main function. So I have an example here that will go through all of this stuff and just show you basically all of those functions in action. So once I hit the play button, I have a set duration of 10 hours. I have a few custom signals in here. And let me hook up. custom signal back to a print string so this is going to run through all of our custom functions at their designated times so one minute 30 seconds anything that's here like this says zero it'll just be ignored one hour and then nothing at the bottom so we have custom event 1, custom event 2, and custom event 4 that will fire. Then we're going to wait 10 seconds, and then we're going to change the speed. So we start out at 360 seconds per real second, and we'll go down to 10. And then we'll wait a little bit, and then we'll modify our clock. We're going to give it a new time. So if we click here, you'll see that the start percentage is going to be 15, and we're going to give it one year. We'll wait a few seconds, we'll pause, we'll save our clock, will open up a new level and then we can load the game back up because this level should just kick us back out and we'll load the game back up and then I'm going to actually input from our game instance where I saved this variable here directly back into an update bar function and we should start off exactly where we left off so let me let this run through for a second going to hit play. So this is our new timer. You see we're starting at 10 hours. And then in a little bit it should slow down like that. And then in a little bit we're going to give it a new time. So now we're at one year. 
And then we're going to travel to a new level after we save. And hopefully this will bring us back. So now we're back in the main level. I uh, have that stupid thing running off of begin play. We'll just let it finish. And now I'm going to load in what we started with. And you see we're back at 11 months, 29 days, and about 20 hours, which is where we left off before we travel to the other level. OK. So now I'm going to show you guys how you can add this to your projects. So first, we're going to have to open up a blank project. OK, now that we have a clean project, what we're going to do is right click here in the content browser. We're going to create a new C++ class. And we're going to make an actor component. So hit Next. And we're going to name this floating underscore fill underscore bar. If you do that, it'll save you some copy paste later. So we'll create class here. And then we're going to wait for Visual Studio to compile. Now that Visual Studio is compiled, we're going to start in our header file. That's floatingfillbar.h here. And what we're going to need to do is copy this line right here that says class, add code API. This will be the name of your project and then the API. So we'll hit Control C. And we'll put that up here. And then we're going to come here and we're going to copy everything from line one all the way down to the dash line. So control C. And we're going to paste that right in here. And last but not least, we're going to take this line here. We're going to cut it, control X. And we're going to come right down to this part where it says class API. And we're going to paste it there. Then we'll go into the C++. And we're going to take everything below the line. Control C. And we can just hit Control A and control V and paste everything right in. Now if you didn't name it floating underscore fill underscore bar, everywhere you see this U floating fill bar, you're going to have to copy and paste the name of your actor component, which you should be able to find right here in the class um, API line. So whatever this is for you guys, that's what you're going to need to make sure all of your C++ functions are named. OK. And we have one last thing to do. So if you guys look over here on the left hand side, you should see the name of your project. And then it should have a source folder. And underneath that will be the name of your project again. And below that should be a build.cs file. And what you're going to need to do is come in here and get rid of these two forward slashes here. And this should light up now. And then right here after input core, we're going to make a comma. And you're going to write UMG, exactly like that. So we're going to have quotes here, capital U, capital M, capital G, quote. And that's just to allow um, access to progress bars and things like that. They're not normally part of this um, module dependency, so you have to add that in. And it's just putting in the UMG right here and getting rid of the forward slashes here so that this line is now available. And you just come up here and we'll hit build. And we'll wait for our project to build. And once we're done with that, you should see one succeeded down here. If you got one failed, just make sure you copy pasted everything properly and that things are named the way they should. OK, and then we can close out of Visual Studio here. And what we're going to do now is we're going to right click here in the content browser, Blueprint Class, and we're going to search for our floating fill bar. 
So we want to make a floating bar BP, and this will distinguish it from the C++ version. And once we double click here, you guys will see that we have these functions like I told you for override signals 1 through 5 and the fill bar complete here. And you guys can just click here and script whatever you want to happen after the bar is complete and whatever you want to do for each of these custom signals or if you don't want to use them, that's fine. And then we'll just go back over here into our enemy. I'm going to add a component. And we'll search for our fill bar. I think that's should be the right one. Oh, I didn't say BP. Let me try this again. What did I name it? Floating bar. That's why. There we are. Floating bar BP. And this is the blueprint version of that component. And once again, if you drag this out, you'll be able to call the function update bar. Be able to pull out clock. I'm just going to feed this into a function here. I've already set this up. This is my widget, and it has a function to update a text. So right here off of begin play, we'll just hook that up there. We'll make this run at 60. We'll fill, and we need to give it our widget reference here. I'm not going to use any custom signaling. We can hide when complete. Right click here and make a variable. And I'll just have this start at, we'll say, 15 minutes. And we need to give it our progress bar name. So if I go into our widget here, called it fill bar, just copy that. And paste it right in here. And for this, I only need minutes seconds and we don't have any signals. So hit compile and save. We'll hit play. And as you guys can see, we are filling up our progress bar and we have the nice time written right here. And there you go. All right, guys, I hope you thought that was helpful, and if you did, don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel, and stay tuned for more tutorials. All right, see you guys later.